And with the crew now in the space station, we're going to wrap up our portion of the live joint coverage from Hawthorne. It's been an honor to support Axiom Mission 4 thus far, and we wish the crew a successful time on the space station. We're, of course, also looking forward to joining AX4 again when it's time to return home. Ronnie, from launch to docking, it has been an absolute pleasure sharing this desk with you. What has been years in the making for India, Poland. 73 crew. All right, so that's a big moment indeed. The first Indian aboard the International Space Station. So Andrew Shukla makes history being the first Indian aboard. Remember that we already have astronauts who are aboard that particular space station, including, of course, uh, astronauts from different space agencies who are very much there at the International Space Station and are conducting experiments uh, for quite some time now. Uh, let me quickly open this up and take it across to our guests. All right, greetings happening even as we speak and of course uh, the formal welcome of course uh, uh, a welcome drink that they appear to be having uh, after getting on board the international space station let me take this across to our guests with us is devdatta mishra former senior program manager at the gaganyaan uh, project uh, which is of course the human space flight center of isro we also have manish purohit former isro scientist joining us but let me go first and foremost to dr amitab ghosh dr amitab ghosh uh, Certainly, of course, uh, the docking procedure that took quite a few hours, if we compare that to the experience that we see in Hollywood movies, it's normally a matter of seconds in those depictions. In this case, it takes several hours. Can you explain to our viewers why is that the case and are there certain precautions that need to be taken? Uh, why is this, uh, what would seem otherwise a normal procedure, why is it otherwise so complicated? Right. So let's just look at the... Um situation here, right? Uh, the context. Um, this is 250 miles above the Earth. Both the vehicles are traveling at 26,000 kilometers an hour. And so, although this seem to be the relative velocity is zero, um, they, they are traveling pretty fast. Um, then third is the temperature outside is very low. It's probably, I don't know, minus 80 uh, degrees centigrade. And then, of course, it's vacuum out there. Um, so, so, so it's a pretty challenging situation. And here, if the the reason, of course, this took so long, you have to take care of the engineering. You cannot afford to have a small leak that will uh, leak air from the International Space Station or the Crew Dragon. So um, it has to be done perfectly. And of course, you know, in the movies, it happens instantaneously. But this is. Um, not a movie and it, although it looks very easy and they are waving and um, there's a live feed um, this is real engineering which needs to be done and if the engineering is not perfect then it can be um, a very dangerous situation right so you need to take care of every small detail possible it's not a luxury it is completely compulsory and oftentimes you have issues which unrelated and you could not have forecasted arise very tiny logistical engineering issues right which need to be which which need to be um hmm. troubleshooted absolutely absolutely i'm sure it's very complicated space is hard you know clearly of course these are of course the most uh, difficult of perhaps all the technologies because there have to be fail safes this has to be a hundred percent reliable and certainly the smallest of suspicions we've seen how they've been different uh, delays that have taken place in the past just to ensure that everything's uh, uh, carefully done at the end of the day there are human lives at stake over here but Manish you know the signs that are there the first Indian finally aboard the International Space Station for you know those who've been associated with space such as you directly and those who are space buffs like me this is indeed a big moment to see you know this picture of an indian aboard the international space station it's a part of indian space history yeah it's part of indian space history and then it should you know you the things should pace up for gaganyaan now we can't wait anymore now we want gaganyaan to happen as early as possible uh, we have been waiting for so long for gaganyaan we are waiting so for so long for such visuals from our own stuff so it's like uh, now that 
thing has again reignited in i think the whole of the country and uh, there will be big dreams right now everyone will be you know on their toes that when that is going to happen with our gaganyaan mission when those tests are going to happen when those flights are going to happen with g1 flight g2 g3 then crewed missions bharti antrik station all these emotions are right now you know they are they are floating very high right now in the mind so things are uh, it's like you know we want to see such visuals more often now with indians flying to the space and you know gagan yatris or astronauts or what what all you call them but amazing <laughs> right now i am not able to completely put my emotions in words actually but i am feeling elated manish it almost feels like to me that you are in zero gravity and elated at the <laughs> moment the way you are speaking but uh, uh, let me also take this across to devdatta mishra mr devdatta mishra i see a broad smile across your face as well it's a moment that has been in the making for you know decades you know this is perhaps the sign of the biggest leap that the indian space program the isro space program is going to have and perhaps the surest sign that india is going to be among that league of uh, space pairing nations who actually put a man into space in perhaps just the next 2 years from now yes uh, <clears throat> resonating your words uh, it's certainly going to happen and fortunately i was part of this project when it kick started in year back 2018 under the direct guidance of our honorable prime minister uh, modi ji i think things are going well on track and i think this is the one step in that direction that uh, group captain sukla uh, was selected uh, to travel to iss because probably this is also any first uh, of indian to put uh, foot in iss also earlier uh, wing commander rakesh sharma ji has went to space but that time he went under the name of cosmonaut and uh, uh, he was abroad uh, that me uh, russian space station so international space station i think this is the history made by group captain sukla and the kind of knowledge experience expertise he will gain there definitely it will be uh, handy for us uh, when uh, this gaganyaan orbital vehicle design developments are happening now in full speed and um, definitely uh, is a historic moment and there is a moment for all all of us to cherish cherish forever right uh, amitabh ghosh if i can come to you on this you know there are already about five crew members on board we can see from those pictures and we know that the iss is actually run by different space agencies it's not just nasa you have in fact roscosmos you have esa you have various uh, J- the jaxa all of them are very much part of this entire mission and uh, you know it really of course is very interesting to see uh, that they will also be parallelly carrying out their experiments while the axiom for crew members do so how does this work uh, in fact on ground because you know all of them have different projects that each of them will be tasked with ensuring are completed during this fortnight right so so if you think of the day there is personal chores then there is um, maintenance of the space station there may be some protocols that everybody does certain things at a certain time and then of course each one goes and does their own experiments so so the scheduling is probably pretty well figured out so it's between all these and this there is no conflict here so you have to kind of figure out who will do what and um and it's pretty smooth and so there are, there are probably redundancies this probably uh, if somebody is not feeling up to it is not able to do something then there is probably coverage but it's it's pretty much like a staffing plan on earth um, in a standard um company or in a standard uh, institution Okay, a staffing plan on a standard institution. Very interesting way to put it, there, uh, Dr. Amitabh Ghosh. But uh, Manish, uh, you know, what are you expecting from this, and what can we expect in terms of the technical know-how? Of course, uh, as we know that uh, Shubhanshu Shukla is a qualified pilot, not just in the Air Force, he's also uh, been playing an important role as far as Axiom Four itself is concerned. These skills are going to be very crucial. But at the end of the day, it's not the same craft that he's going to be flying when it comes to Gaganyaan, isn't it? yeah but actually doing simulations in the lab any day is not equal to flying in a crew module going to the international space station and feeling the micro gravity where it actually is in simulated environments feeling the thing and doing it actually so that kind of an experience is surely going to help us when we are thinking about gaganyaan no two crew modules are same starliner is different soyuz is different dragon is different gaganyaan will be different obviously they will be different but the purpose is 
we have to take care of the flight we have to take care of that nitty gritties and we have to make a safe travel to the space so that basic technology remains the same how they are doing it that can be different but the basic principles that derive the whole vehicle the whole mission they almost remains the same that how you have to take care of all that basic electronics part the communication part right now if you see here uh, initially they had a kind of a small hiccup when the commun communication part was not happening when the dragon data has to get connected to the international space station after the hard latch it took some time but then if you see uh, dragon is flying so many times to international space station so many crewed flights have been take, done by dragon but then that's the technology aspect of it and obviously uh, shubhanshu shukla flying in it and seeing all that thing happening real time being part of it piloting the mission when he knows at what time exactly what maneuvers are done how the calculations are done what is that how the trajectories are defined how the time bound instructions are passed so these are the things that somewhere that's what we are looking as an outcome from this particular the 14 day uh, journey to space of subhash shukla ji okay let me bring in devdat mishra ji devdat mishra how important is it to actually send a man into space before we actually carry out let me ask this question from a real layman's perspective how will it impact directly on gaganyaan uh, of course there will be a lot of experience as manish was telling us that he will gather and how will that be crucial in transferring that because it's a different set of technology it's a different set of spacecraft that we're talking about at the end of the day how does this directly benefit gaganyaan please explain to our viewers certainly it will have its own advantages and merits because as uh, my colleague said uh, doing all the experiment simulation at at, at art uh, we cannot uh, have that fast hand experience like things uh, behave differently under less gravity condition or we call it micro gravity not zero gravity because uh, wherever you go you cannot uh, uh, mitigate gravity gravity gravitational pull will be there but under uh, less than 9.81 how things behave within your body what will have its effect on your own metabolism um, uh, as well as a psychological effect i think it it makes the space journey different from uh, any other journey on earth what we do on daily basis and uh, i think i anticipate or i guess uh, suvan sukla when you will come back definitely will come back with a man of wisdom and you uh, will share is nitigate in always what you will learn especially this communication point of view having the cclss uh, effect on his body that is environmental control life support system where they are artificially they create the environment <clears throat> the temperature the humidity what we experience on earth uh, when we are living here and the effect of uh, solar radiations and the effect of vacuum uh, gravity less environment so i think all these inputs uh, will be really it will be helpful in incorporating our own desi uh, uh, orbital vehicle nickname gaganyaan and uh, and and the, and being an integral part of this project definitely is experience expertise and uh, the first hand uh, knowledge will be really it will be helpful hmm. and coming forward when we'll have our own space station down the line uh, as bharatiya antrikshya station it is named uh, so these all the knowledge also will be helpful in 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 that time also right let me bring in in fact uh... Uh, Dr. Amitabh Ghosh on this. Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, of course, scenes of jubilation there, but uh, very, very important to look at it in terms of the perspective and the road ahead. You know, when you look at the Indian space program, it's grown by leaps and bounds over the last two decades. You know, uh, Chandrayaan, we have seen the failures and then the successes uh, repeatedly. There have been different kinds of approaches, but Gaganyaan will be one mission which will be very important to get right the very first time in terms of uh, the risks, uh, given the fact that it's human space. we've seen axiom 4 and how there have been repeated delays are you foreseeing that in gaganyaan as well things would happen as per the course or do you see that these are pretty much par for course when it comes to human space flight yeah i think any space flight you know you see any any big project there is always delays you know you cannot short change the engineering process if there is something not working you have to resolve it so that it's not a danger right at least at an acceptable level of risk okay so um there 
See, it's very hard to project a trajectory. Even uh, each project that you think there has been delays, from the Mars rover to if you if you're following Starship, which Elon Musk, the next generation launch vehicle that is, he's developing, it keeps blowing up every time. I don't know, it's probably blown up ten plus times. Uh, but each time they learn a little more. So that that is of course um, um, going to be a trajectory. But how much? delays, it's very hard to predict. Something you said before, um, the big step is, this looks very good. The screen that it's like a dream that an Indian is on the space station. But I think the bigger step is Gaganyan. So, so, so when this whole engineering system um, uh, is able to take uh, humans to space uh, in your own vehicle, um, that is a very, very big step. And about um, what um, Shubhangshu Shukla will learn from this, it's a lot of the human um, machine interaction things, and then some processes he might be able to suggest. So, so it's it's an incredible experience to have. But you know, uh, sometimes, uh, but but it is. How should I say? The, the, sometimes you don't have the luxury of this experience. Absolutely. So the U.S. didn't have it. Chinese didn't have it. So it's like it's good to play in the Eden Gardens before the test match. But Absolutely. even if you did not play in Eden Gardens, you can still probably play it. Play and wait. But the point is that it always helps to have that little bit of experience. Absolutely. And as you rightly said, just about 288 visitors to uh, have visited the International Space Station, the orbiting lab, which is of course collaboration between US and Russia and of course internationally various agencies. And that's among that select league of people today that Subhangshu Shukla is now very much a part of. A huge moment and clearly a moment where India has reached the ISS, but the message is very clear. Not just are we going to get to Gaganyan, perhaps we can hope for an Indian space station in decades to come as well. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us in this historic moment as far as India's arrival amongst the great space-faring nations of the world are concerned. Thank you so much, gentlemen, indeed.